defaulted on its debt obligations. Prices of commodities have skyrocketed. The cocoa sector has virtually collapsed. And pensioners have been tortured with some sense to their early graves through the crude and painful financial haircuts meted out to many families. Ladies and gentlemen, on one hand, even though 2024 will be a difficult year, filled with economic hardship because of the mismanagement of economy, on the other hand, 2024 also brings hope. Hope because the non-performing government is on its way out of office. Again, 2024 brings hope because on December 7th, you will have the singular opportunity to vote for the experienced and visionary flag bearer of the NDC, John Dramani Mahama, as the next president of the Republic of Ghana. He is the man who handed over to this government the following. Three active produ oil producing and revenue generating fields. He took over only one from President um, Atamils at that time. And at the time of handing over, there were three active oil producing and revenue generating fields. Robust streams of revenue, including the energy sector level. Strong economic buffers, including sinking fund and stabilization fund. Strong economic growth pools. We handed over the Ghana Infrastructure Investment Fund and an impressive credit and economic rating of a B plus. Sadly, on January 7th, 2025, the incompetent government of Nana Kufuado and Baumia will be handing over an economy on the verge of collapse to Mahama. We know Mahama will fix it. I urge you to vote massively and convincingly from John Dramani Mahama because he's the man with the vision, the experience, the empathy to restore Ghana's economy to good health and to create well-paying jobs for all, Ghanaians including the youth. Creating opportunities for all is one of the key reasons we are determined to win this election in order to implement the 24-hour economic policy. Ladies and gentlemen, every evidence and indicator shows the NDC will win the 2024 elections. Beyond the polls published by pollsters, our series of internal research consistently points to a one-third victory for John Dramani Mahama with a convincing working majority in Parliament. However,
we are not complacent because polls alone do not confer victory on the political party in elections. Moreover, it's being said that those who vote decide nothing. But those who count the votes decide everything. We are conscious of the fact that our opponents who control the state machinery do not believe in fairness at all. That is why we are assuring Ghanaians we will not relent until every vote is cast, every vote is counted, and every vote is made to count by the Jimensa led electoral commission. We will not rest until we ensure every single Ghanaian is protected. The dastardly murder of eight Ghanaians to make Akufuado president in 2020 must not be repeated in 2024. The blood of the murdered eight shall remain a stain on the Akufuado Baumia's second term record forever. Instead of President Akufuado demanding congratulations from President John Dramani Mahama, as we are picking from the media, we suggest that. He must listen to his predecessor when he says he's the only person who has a predecessor who will become his successor. When President Mahama says the use of tax and rogue elements within the security agencies to disrupt elections in some parts of the country as occurred in 2020 elections leading to the loss of eight lives will forever be remembered as Ghana's day of infamy." Unquote. Nanado must also take a cue from Mr. Mahama when he adds that it is unconscionable that three years after three tragic after these tragic, tragic events, our President Nana Kufado has not uttered even a word of sympathy to the bereaved families. Ladies and gentlemen, Nana Kufado should rather be implementing the recommendations of the Commission of Inquiry, which he himself set up that interrogated the actors and victims of the Ayawasu West war gone by election violence and not be worried over congratulations from a flag bearer. We will not congratulate anybody who murders Ghanaians to secure power. We will not. <laughs> Similarly, he must not only be apologizing to the people of Central Kofi, Akwafu, Likwe, and Lolobi for disenfranchising them in 2020, but also he must be ensuring their representation in Parliament is restored. Let me assure you, fellow Ghanaians, as we commemorate 31 years of the 1992 Constitution that restored Ghana to democratic governance, that the next 
NDC government shall deliver justice to all victims of this government's misrule. And we mean it. We shall go after the perpetrators who murdered the eight Ghanaians during the 2020 election. <coughs> Even if they murder more in 2024. We shall find the perpetrators. They can run, but they cannot hide. And we shall punish the perpetrators when we win power on December 7th this year. Ladies and gentlemen, as happens during every election year, we expect our offices to be inundated with invitations to participate in events and activities to promote peaceful elections. While we appreciate the efforts of such religious leaders, traditional authorities, and civil society organizations, NDC believes that the way to solve a problem is to deal with its root causes. We urge them to add their collective voices to our call to state institutions involved in the conduct of the 2024 elections to approach their duties with professionalism, fairness, and honesty. The officials serving in these institutions, i.e., the Security, Judiciary, and the Electoral Commission must constantly be reminded of their oaths of office, which impose on them onerous responsibilities to secure and protect the interests, and not any other interest, the interests of Mother Ghana. That is what the oath they swore to take the office impose on them. Nana Kufado must be reminded of his presidential oath and his oath of allegiance on the 7th of January 2017 and the repetition on 2021, which imposed on him specific duties and responsibilities in one piece. He must be called out to abandon his partisan commitment, which he has expressed publicly, that he will do whatever is in his power during the remaining time in office to hand over power to an, independent, to an MPP successor. He wants to choose his successor and not the people of Ghana in whom the sovereignty of Ghana resides. We are saying no way. Ladies and gentlemen, Akufuado is simply undermining the sovereign will of Ghanaians to choose who our president must be. Sovereignty resides with the people, and only the people must bestow the right to lead on politicians, not Akufuado. My dear people in moral society, we in the NDC want to assure you that we in the NDC are victims of MPP's violent crimes. We in the NDC continue, will continue to work for a peaceful Ghana and protect the interests of the masses. But we will not sit unconcerned for a repeat of the 2020 election related killings. That one we will not continue.
because it's been said that the first law of nature is self-protection. And we are saying never again. We believe it is unfair to call on the victims to guarantee the peace of the oppressor. We are the victims of violence. And yet when the moral and civil society speaks, they either are engaged in equalization and calling all of us to ensure peaceful elections, or telling us in NDC who are the victims to ensure that the oppressor has peace. Never again. Ladies and gentlemen, we believe that those who are planning to come to our offices to invite us to participate in activities geared towards peaceful elections, signing of memoranda, and all that. The time is now. This is the time to call out the people, the actual perpetrators who create disruptions to our peace, to put in the right structures to ensure there is peace. We don't control the army. We don't control the police. We don't control any arm of the security services. And we don't control the arbiter of the elections with the Electoral Commission. So the moral society must rise up and support us with their collective voices. Now that there is more time for us to correct what is wrong so that we can have a peaceful 2020 election. They shouldn't wait till October, November when they know that what has been orchestrated cannot be corrected because of lack of time to now be appealing to us to condone the wrongdoing and to accept what the oppressor is imposing on us. NDC is tired of being the victims of peace. We must all be the beneficiaries of peace, not the victims. So if you are all interested in peace, let everybody play their role to ensure that there will be peaceful elections. But when somebody is holding a knife at our truth, I say, you keep quiet. The pain will go very soon, you will feel no pain. You are telling us that very soon that we will feel no pain will be after we are dead, we will feel no pain. Tell the oppressor to remove the knife. And we all have peace in this country. Ladies and gentlemen, this government knows its uncountable and unconscionable actions and inactions, including corruption, flagrant human rights abuses, and more. Therefore, they are preparing to hang onto power at all costs in order to escape justice. There is no way they can escape justice. They are behaving like people who are riding a tiger. 
If you get down, the tiger will devour you. If you stay on the back of the tiger, you die of hunger. <laughs> so they don't know what to do. But we are saying that if you are in MPP government and you haven't done any wrong to the nation or the people of Ghana, you have nothing to fear. Ladies and gentlemen, I will tell you, they will fail in the attempt to hold on to power. And we will take over the election, the, the, the governance of this country and the nation will remain peaceful. They will fail because we prove it. Granted to MPP have lost the district level elections miserably. The elections are non-partisan. It is illegal for any political party to seek to sponsor any candidate. But the identity of the candidates and participants are known. And so, we have conducted a compilation of persons who contested from our ranks, who contested the district assembly elections. And I can tell you, persons affiliated to MPP, they vote you out. <laughs> yes, the MPP people have miserably lost the district assembly and unit committee elections to members, supporters, and affiliates of the NDC. Sincere political watchers and analysts know this is another evidence when the government is on its way out of office. They know because even though the Processes leading to the district level elections are non-partisan. Most of the contestants and the voters are aware of where their candidates stand politically. As an illustration, in Walewale in the Northeast region, which happens to be the constituency of the sitting vice president and the MPP flag bearer. The MP NDC affiliates won the majority of the electoral areas. Our people won 18. Eight, sorry, I beg your pardon. Eight out of the 12 in the trials. <laughs> also, in Abura, Asebu, Kwamankasi, AAK, in Central Region, we captured 24 out of 31 in the trials. <laughs> and in Almighty Hohoi, where the seat is illegally held by the MPP with the connivance of the Electoral Commission in 2020. NDC had 12 out of 17 seats. In 2020, when they were doing the gerrymandering and thought they were cutting out NDC strong report. They did the gerrymandering leaving only two assembly seats out of the 17. But the people had a reason 
They've seen through the manipulation, and today they have returned 12 out of the 70, from 2 to 12. We have the attached seat, a sheet for your perusa. And we have the constituency breakdown of results of the district level elections with pie charts. Those MPP leaders who just are found of lying because they are following the tradition and behavior of their flag bearer. Just put concocted material in the social media, claiming that they have won 57%. Let them come out with the evidence. We have the evidence now, and we will show it to you. And let them come and challenge them. Ladies and gentlemen, even Ashanti and Eastern region were also very impressive for the NDC compared to the 2019 performance. Presently, even though the Electoral Commission unexpectedly postponed voting in some electoral areas in these two stronghold regions of the ruling MPP, NDC members and affiliates secured 34%, over 34%, and over 45 percent of the electoral areas in Ashanti and Eastern region, respectively. 